Entry 5. Mentor. Nuvarella was a large town, and it was a diamond in the rough. It was a valley, surrounded by lush, emerald green trees while the mountains hid it from view. It was like paradise. But as we left the plane and rode on our company van, we noticed the feeling of loneliness, of offness, like we were sure something was very wrong in this town. We had arrived in the evening, and the town should have been crowded, bustling with activity. But there was only silence. Nothing but the soft pitter-patter of evening rain and the eerie quiet of the entire place. Where is everybody? Cassie questioned, looking around the central town area, a large square with statues and shops all around. However, the shops were closed. I concur. Where is everyone? I said, walking out of the van to follow Cassie. Quint and Canopy walked out next, fiddling with some bizarre technological instruments as they did. That's odd, Canopy murmured. I'm detecting a large amount of, well, nothing. I'm not detecting anything psychic or mysterious at all. Hello? yodeled Cassie. Anyone here? No answer. There's the hotel we're supposed to stay at, I mentioned, pointing at a large tall building in one of the town square's corners. Cassie nodded to that and went into the van and got our luggage. Hey, yelled a voice. You can't be out here. What? I yelled back, only turning to see a police officer in her car. There's a 5 p.m. curfew in place because of the recent crimes? Wait. You guys aren't from around here. Yeah, we aren't. We're investigating the crimes, Cassie explained, pulling out several strange cards with an odd spiral symbol on them. We're with the FBI. It was obviously a lie, but somehow it worked. It must have been whatever magic was on the cards. Glad to know that, ma'am. I'm Stephanie Rengage. I'm the lead investigator for the, uh so-called mask murder case. You mean mass murder? Quint asked. No, mask murder. She's right, Cassie informed. We're here investigating a mysterious image containing a mask, very much like the ones we've seen before. I wasn't informed of this, moaned Quint. I'll tell you all about it, Canopy laughed, realizing we all forgot to tell the doctor what had happened. I'll have everyone but... She put a hand on my head as she did, causing me to blush. Rainy here, go to the hotel. Could you please tell Rainy what's been going on? All right, then, the detective agreed, leading me to her car. We'll be at the police station. And then, so it was, the three of them in the hotel, and I, tired and confused, was in a car sent to learn about a series of murders. I did not get paid enough for this. It then occurred to me that I, in fact, did not get paid at all. In fact, Watchtower 7 didn't pay any of its employees besides a monthly check we used to buy any gear and additional items to add to our home. Food and drink was sent from drones. We could order special meals other than the normal standard rations through an app called the Watchtower 7 Dinner Table, which we were all signed up as a group. Watchtower credits were awarded so we could purchase different meals when we completed a mission. The team had enough Watchtower credits rolling in every day from Grayson's demon hunting missions all across the world, which was some sort of special deal with our sister company, Company 7, which were also where the warehouses were. But soon we arrived at the police station, which was painted a fresh sky blue, and I was invited in. It looked new and wonderful, and I could smell fresh coffee coming from what seemed to be a kitchen, where two officers were chatting. Stephanie Rengage took me to a large office, hers in fact, and offered me a croissant, which I gladly accepted. It was filled with cheese, injected in fact, but it wasn't real cream cheese, it was those fake synthetic ones. Anyway, you didn't read this far to listen to me ramble about how I hadn't eaten anything but this weird fake cheese. So, about the mask murders, I asked. Right, Stephanie replied, taking a sip from her coffee, which had a small label that read, 
depresso expresso for when you're depressed. So, a couple of days ago, we found a teen dead in Nuvarella Central River. But the thing is, his entire body was drenched in water, and we couldn't recover any big evidence except for his phone. Phone? Yeah, she replied, taking a sip of her depresso, looking bored. The phone was impossibly dry. The guy was, as our lab guy says, drowned and stabbed at the same time. We also found a total of 17 knife wounds. But the thing is, the phone was perfectly fine, as opposed to the rest of his body. How so? Well, when we first got it, it was showing this glitch, where the screen just sort of fizzled. But then, our lab guy, he connected it to a computer, and it was fine. We couldn't find any reason why, though. But what we saw on the phone was just the beginning. What did you find? I asked, taking a bite out of the synthetic cheese croissant. Well, soon we realized that there was almost nothing on the phone. And I mean nothing. Well, almost. There was some images of him playing with his friends, but what confused us the most was this strange image that just wouldn't load. It was called img.mask, but it behaved like an img file. That's impossible. It's supposed to be mask.img, not img.mask. Maybe it was a prank gif? No, it wasn't, because it almost did, and we almost saw a face. But then it just crashed, and we barely managed to recover the phone, Stephanie admitted. It took us a while to get it back from a fizzling blank screen, but we did. But then we saw this, this app that wasn't there before. Odd. What was it? She sighed, but continued. We found something called Mannequins and Masks, and it was some sort of horror turn-based game about exploring a world that had nothing except for endless stretches of houses. It was creepy, but it didn't explain how it got on there. Furthermore, our lab guy, who's a bit of a horror fan, had never heard of the game. In fact, it wasn't on any app store, and the only thing we could find about it was this urban legend on the internet, where someone claimed to have gotten sucked into the game. And then? Well, so our tech guy, Stephanie began. Well, he tried to copy the game onto his own phone and laptop to try to find out how it got there. He ruled out Wi-Fi and Bluetooth since the phone couldn't seem to connect, so we were just left confused. Did you guys try to play it? Yeah, we got our intern to play it. What happened? I'll tell you, she said. Our tech guy couldn't find out why the game wouldn't copy properly, so we managed to get the entire phone copied onto an extra phone he bought. It worked, and he looked around, but couldn't find anything, so we asked the intern to play the game and search for clues. But really, just for fun. Then? I asked. Then we found our intern, dead in the lab. She was closing it up, and we found her hanging dead from the ceiling. We knew someone had killed her because there were no signs of struggle. But strangely, there wasn't anyone else there. The cameras were also gone. Even the secret ones only the higher-ups know about. What could have killed her? We... we don't know. We had her examined, but the weirdest thing was is she seemed to have been dead for four days. But she was only gone for a moment before we found her dead. Her phone? Yes, her phone was the first thing we looked for, specifically the phone with the game's copy. However, we couldn't find that one, only her normal one, and that's when we realized it had been wiped clean save for a few images and that strange unloadable img.mask file that didn't make sense. We tried to reverse whatever had been done to it, but when we did, the same game popped up. Mannequins and masks. The photos, did you find any... strange things on them? Yes, we did, Stephanie revealed. It took us a while, but in all of the photos that weren't wiped, we found this... This woman hiding in the shadows. This woman wearing the same dress, and always her face was covered. Is the woman... I began, showing her an image of Maisie Krylov on my phone, as well as the Unity dress and book. Her? Yes. How did you... 
Never mind. Who is she? Her name's Maisie Krylove. Wait, I swear I've heard that name before. Stephanie cut me off, going to her laptop and opening her own case files. You have? She ignored me, muttering some vaguely familiar words. Mannequin murders. Masks. Shadow paths. Gray. Let's see. Here. She came up with a case file on Maisie Krylov. I read it. She had been put in a temporary cell for being suspected of missing people, whose bodies were never found. It was back in the day, probably right after she found the Unity book. All signs seemed to point at her being the culprit, but no evidence was found even though cameras had sighted her nearby the places the people were last seen. But that was when the two of us found out where she lived. Right here in the town of Nuverella. Oh my god, Stephanie murmured. Whoever this... this person is... She must be behind these murders. She even lives near the police station. Really? It was true. Maisie Krylov lived a few blocks away. That... We need to find out what she's up to. But first, I'll tell you everything else. Good. And I think, um, we were at the... I know what part we were on. We soon found a constant to the cases when a third body was found stabbed and hung upside down in the woods. The phone, after a while, had the game, the woman, and the bizarre IMG mask file. And then? We managed to get the image. We somehow got lucky for a moment, and the image was clear to us. It was of this... this mask, but just with no features beside the eyes, two holes for a nose, and a carved, empty smile for a mouth. I've seen that before, I said, showing her the ones I had seen. That's exactly it, she murmured. She paused, then retrieved an image of the mask from the file. It's exactly the same. At that moment, someone rang my phone, the one given by the watchtower. I looked, seeing that it was Cassie. A moment, I said to the detective, stepping out and answering the phone. Rainy? called Cassie. She sounded worried, panicked. Are you at the station? I am. Why? I replied. There's something very wrong with this town, she shouted. You need to stay away from the hotel. Why? But before I could hear anything else, I heard Cassie's voice being muffled, and then heard a gunshot ring in the air before everything went silent. But then I heard the voice of a woman's. But it was distorted, and it was sustained. Every word going on and on forever, yet it seemed to echo. There's no way out. out. And then my phone crackled, and I saw it was fizzing and shaking until it rested on the image of a featureless mask. Rainy, was it? Yeah, I replied, shaking, but turning to see the detective. What the hell is happening? Just when your little group of friends entered the town, it... What's going on? There's no way out. What do you... I've just received several reports from people that when they try to leave the only straight pathway out of town, they go on for a while but somehow end up back here. What have you and your team gotten us into? I... I don't know. I panicked. I took a deep breath and then spoke. I... Can you check the cameras surrounding their hotel? Fine. What I saw almost caused me and the detective to faint in fear. Just a minute ago, many people in their houses seemed to simply walk up, smiling blankly, and head to the central square, where the hotel was at. Seemingly dozens of these blank-faceted people walked to the hotel, surrounding it, and even entering the building. More and more people seemed to enter the building, and I felt as if my team was doomed to be surrounded by these... these people. No. Creatures. That's when I noticed that these people weren't just blankly smiling. No, they were all wearing the same mask, as I have seen so many times. I turned to look at the detective, and then jumped in horror as I realized she somehow had a mask in her hands, and that she seemed to be looking at it in shock as her hand seemed to begin to place it onto her face. No! I yelled, tackling the woman. 
I felt my body crash against what seemed to be aisles and aisles of food, clothing, and toys. Metal aisles that tumbled, that weren't there before. I looked around to see we were now in some sort of abandoned department store. Through aisles and aisles of objects, I could see mannequins posed as if guarding us, yet also to display clothes that all had the pattern of the unity. What the hell happened? No, where are we? Stephanie yelled. As soon as she did, I heard this sickening noise coming from a mannequin, like bone ripping from flesh, and to my horror, I saw its neck move, causing its head to turn towards us. I threw up from the sound. The two of us looked around to see more of the mannequins in a circle around us. The others weren't moving, and the one that did was now back to its original position, like nothing had happened. Well, spoke a distorted, echoing voice. Well, well. Look who finally came to confront me. Watch Tower 7 at last. Who, who are you? Where are you hiding? I am both everywhere and nowhere, spoke the echoing voice. But who are you? I lash out against the damn company, the Watchtower, leaving clues on the way. But then, who do they send? A worthless team of rejects who are all living from the credits a priest earns? How utterly ridiculous. Who, who are you? But I knew who the voice was already. In fact, I actually recognized the voice. Don't you know who I am? Me, who led you all the way here? You, you? That's right, Rainy Light. It's me, the voice cackled, coming from everywhere. Cassie White. <laughs>